Greetings ladies and gentlefish and welcome to this video taking a look at high explosive damage mechanics. Oh yeah, we're going to do a little bit of maths, uh, to which half of you have probably just fainted. Don't worry, hopefully we'll try and keep it as simple as we can. Um, this video is kind of spawned from a couple of things. One, perusing the game forums, you notice, well, I've noticed a lot of people end up asking questions about high explosive uh, damage mechanics and well I say asking questions they usually jump up to complain about them and point out how they're clearly broken and not working um, when the actual reality is they don't understand how they're supposed to work and this is not helped by the fact that many community contributors for the game also don't understand how they work and to be fair these are the most complicated uh, shell mechanics and damage mechanics in the game and I'm not trying to pick on anyone in particular but okay I'm going to pick on someone in particular <laughs> so the largest or until recently the largest World of Tanks YouTuber the Mighty Jingles um, and I just for the record I have the utmost respect for the guy um, he's one of the reasons that I stopped sucking massively at the game which was nice but Bless him, he hasn't played the game that much in a while, and he gets some things wrong, and that's fine. I don't have an issue with getting things wrong, but what does grind my gears a little bit is when you talk with some perceived authority on the subject of, for example here, game mechanics, and of course people will see you as an authority on the subject because you're, well, one of the largest... Uh, YouTube is one of the largest public faces of the game and so people will see you as an authority and you just are wrong and have been wrong for a long time and haven't really taken the effort to update your knowledge and so we get such gems like the Centurion Mark 1 has fantastic DPM no it doesn't it has one of the worst DPM values in class and tier it's tragic the only tank with worse is the FV4202, the premium. So that's nonsense. Or always carry a little bit of high explosive because it's guaranteed to do damage when you need to decap. Is it guaranteed to do damage? Anyone who's played this game for any period of time knows that's not true. Because you just fire a HE round from a small caliber gun at something with notable armor and you ain't gonna do diddly. So... The point of this video, I guess, is twofold. One, to try and convey how the high explosive mechanics in this game actually work and maybe give you a little bit of information that you can use to, you know, tell people on the internet they're wrong and also maybe improve your own gameplay. And two, just a little message that it doesn't matter who it is that's telling you something. It's always worth going and double checking for yourself because anybody can be wrong. Sometimes maliciously and sometimes just honest mistake and varying degrees in between. So with that being said I'm going to take most of my information for this video from the World of Tanks wiki. Now that is not an infallible source, it does occasionally get things wrong and that's what you're looking at here, but it is about as close as we get to having a full game manual. So if you ever want to know how something works this should probably be your first port of call. Having said that, there are a couple of bits where the wording gets a little bit funky. And I think it's probably a translation um, issue. And this is obviously the English version. I don't know how well other languages are supported. But hopefully here, we're going to try and explain how high explosive shell mechanics work why spool liners suck, which I've alluded to a couple of times in the past, but we'll fold that in as well. And with any luck, you might learn something. This, in case you hadn't noticed, is going to be quite a long video, and it's going to be a talkie, so I strongly suggest you go and acquire some coffee, tea, chocolate milk, whatever your beverage of choice is. Heck, maybe beer will get you through it. And just pause the video for a moment before we continue. Come back and return to it in a couple of minutes when you're suitably prepared. And I'll see you in a sec. So what we're going to do is go through a few different things with 
this, uh, like I said, this might take a little bit of time. So firstly, um, we've got the high explosive damage mechanics themselves. Qualitatively, descriptively, what do they do? The high explosive damage formula, we'll have a look at that. We'll construct, or I guess we're in the process of this, we'll ask the question, can you get a situation where a high explosive shell does literally zero damage? And how likely is that sort of scenario? And in the process, we'll try and construct um, an example where that might be the case. Uh, we'll look at an example of high explosive shell damage um, and we'll try and calculate the damage and we'll use an in-game example so we'll see how that goes and then we'll look at the effects of the spool liner we may well fold that into the high explosive damage discussion earlier on the effects of spaced armor and we'll just briefly mention self-propelled guns at the end because they're a little bit special uh, long story short wargaming nerfed them anyway so when you are dealing with high explosive shells, what is it that makes them different from regular shells? Well, every other type of shell in World of Tanks, when it strikes an armoured surface, either it penetrates and does whatever its average or nominal damage is, plus or minus 25% because RNG, or it doesn't penetrate, in which case it does no damage. High explosive shells are different because they explode, as the name would indicate, which means... You have to account for that explosion radius and you also therefore have to account for the fact that just because a high explosive shell hasn't directly hit you doesn't necessarily mean it hasn't done any damage. So that's what we're going to kind of look at. So let's consider the first example where you've got a high explosive shell that actually hits a vehicle. So a vehicle is going to be separated up into a variety of different armor zones and there'll be a bunch of different modules in that as well. Now, if a high explosive shell hits the armoured surface of a vehicle, you have one of two scenarios. Either it penetrates or it doesn't, kind of obviously. If it does penetrate, then you will do the same as every other shell, your nominal, your average amount of damage to that tank's hit points, plus or minus 25% for RNG. But there's also a chance, or a greater chance, that you'll damage modules. So, what the game does is it says I'm going to take the point of impact of that high explosive shell and I'm going to project a 45 degree wide cone into the tank. Any module that falls within that cone the high explosive shell will damage. Okay so now that doesn't necessarily mean those modules will be knocked out. Uh, modules for example get a saving throw I'm not going to get into that, but there's a chance they won't take any actual damage. But the point I'm making is that there is a cone in which modules can be damaged. So it's not just that if a shell passes through a module, it will be damaged. There is an area of effect inside the vehicle. So that's if a shell penetrates a tank. If a shell doesn't penetrate a tank because the penetration isn't sufficient to go through that armoured plate, and this is the more common scenario, then things get a little bit more complicated. So, what does the game do in that situation? Well, the game takes the high explosive shell's uh, radius, its splash radius, and within that splash radius, it determines the point on the target tank where the high explosive shell would do the most damage. It uses a formula to work that out that we'll look at in a moment um, and this is going to be one of the limitations of our discussion here because we're not going to have a piece of computer code to determine that point for us we're going to go with educated guesswork but it finds the point of the armor within that explosion radius so it draws a sphere around the point of impact of the HE shell within that sphere what is the point of armor at which the HE shell would do the most damage now that point in question must also be able to draw an unimpeded, i.e. unblocked, uh, line of sight to the impact point. So basically what it's saying is, shell hits tank, shell go boom. If there's a piece of paper next to the shell going boom that's protecting your tank, 
that piece of paper isn't going to offer much protection and so that's really where most of the damage from the HE shell is going to come from rather than three inches of steel at the point of impact. That's the rationale. Once you have ascertained that point, again it projects a cone inside the tank with a 45 degree um, aperture and it does module damage within that cone as per um, a penetrating high explosive uh, shell. However, it then applies a damage formula to work out what the actual damage is going to be. The idea being that it's not going to do as much damage because it hasn't actually penetrated the vehicle. The other scenario is that we're going to ignore spaced armor for now. We're going to come back to that later. But the other scenario is that a high explosive shell explodes near a tank. Maybe it hits a building or a pigeon or whatever. It explodes near a tank and it could do damage to the tank, but it doesn't actually hit the tank itself. Once again, the game goes, here is the point of impact, let's construct a sphere around that point of impact, equal with the radius equal to the explosion radius of the HE shell, and within that sphere, I'm going to determine the point of the tank lying within that sphere against which the HE shell would do the most damage, and... I'm going to project a cone from that point and use that for doing uh, module damage and whatnot. One notable exception here is that in the event that a high explosive shell does not actually hit a vehicle, internal modules will not be damaged. It will only damage external modules. In the scenario where a high explosive shell actually does hit the tank, then um, internal modules can be damaged as well. So they are the, the main scenarios that we're dealing with here. Now in the case of a penetrating HE shell, actually working out how much damage it does is relatively straightforward because, well, it's its average damage plus or minus 25% for RNG. It's where it doesn't penetrate, whether that be the shell actually striking the vehicle or whether that be because the shell has exploded nearby the vehicle and the vehicle just happens to lie within the explosion radius, that's when things get more complicated. And that's where a lot of, or that's partly where a lot of the confusion comes in. So the total damage done by a high explosive shell to a vehicle, total hit point damage, is equal to some damaging term minus a damage mitigation term. Uh, mitigation meaning damage prevention term. So we're going to look at each of these terms in more detail in a moment, but there's just a couple of things I want to say before we do. Firstly, there is nothing about this formula that explicitly prevents zero damage, zero total damage resulting. In fact, any scenario where the damage mitigation term is equal to or larger than the damaging term in this equation would lead to the total damage being either zero or negative. Now what the game does is it caps that damage at zero such that people can't fire HE at someone and it heals them because negative damage. <laughs> so what you get is if the damage mitigation term is larger than the damaging term and thus the total damage would be a negative number, the game says nah we're just going to set that to zero because that's far more sensible. But there is nothing here preventing zero damage from resulting. And when we have a look at what components are found in the damaging term and the damage mitigation term, essentially how you're going to construct that scenario is by having really thick armour and or a relatively low calibre HE shell. So zero damage is entirely possible. The statement, high explosive shells always do damage, is nonsense. Okay, with that out of the way, let's have a look at each of these terms in detail. And I've tried to write them relatively simply. So firstly, the damaging term. What do we have? The damaging term is equal to 0.5, so a half, times the nominal or average shell damage of that high explosive shell times, this bit's all in brackets, 1 minus the impact distance 
in meters divided by the splash radius in meters. So the splash radius is just the splash radius of the HE shell. You can go and look it up in the game client or you can look it up on tanks.gg or whatever resource you want to use. The impact distance is the distance between the impact point of the shell and the point at which the game has calculated the shell will do maximum damage. Now if the impact distance is equal to the splash radius, i.e. if you're looking at a point right at the very edge of the splash radius of your shell, that fraction goes to 1, therefore that bracket becomes 1 minus 1 which is 0 and the damaging term vanishes to 0. So this expression says firstly that at the very limit of the splash radius of a shell it will do zero damage. So it goes from a maximal point in the middle, which makes sense, a maximal point in the middle to zero damage at the very edges. It's also worth noting that even before we start looking at damage mitigation which is mainly determined by the thickness of the target's armour, even before we look at that if your high explosive shell has not penetrated your target, your damage is automatically halved before anything else is applied. It is halved. Okay? So if you had a 900 average damage shell from like a 15 centimeter gun and you fire it at someone but you do not penetrate, immediately your damage goes down to 450 before it applies anything else. Now this, as far as I understand it, though I could be slightly mistaken here, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, this is not directly relevant to what we're going to be doing, but this was originally how the damage from high explosive shells was calculated, just this expression. This is way, way back in the Dawny Mists of World of Tanks. And if you look at this, I think this is where some of the confusion comes in about high explosive shells will always do some damage. Because if you've been playing this game from inception, and this is how high explosive shells used to do damage, as long as you, your, t the tank you're targeting, as long as part of it is within your explosion radius, you're always going to do at least some damage. But, way back in, I believe it was 2012, Wargaming decided HE shells were a little too good, and so they nerfed them. Moving on to the damage mitigation term. So, the damage mitigation term reduces the amount of damage a high explosive shell does by factoring in the thickness of the armour of the target. It basically says if you've got a target and it's got thicker armour, it's going to take less damage, which seems like a fairly reasonable statement. So this term is equal to 1.1 multiplied by the armour thickness at the point of damage, not the point of impact, the point of damage, in millimetres, times your spool coefficient, and this is where your spool liner comes in. So let's say you are using a spool liner and let's say it's not in the survivability slot of a heavy tank off the top of my head. Um, that will have a spool coefficient of 1.5. So it increases the armour thickness at the point of damage by a factor of, in that example, 1.5. So if this term we go back to the full equation, this term is deducted, is subtracted from the damaging term. So your high explosive shell hits the target, the game works out whether or not the shell penetrates. If it does not penetrate, then the game ascertains the point within the explosion radius at which that HE shell will do the most damage, and the damage calculation is done against that point. It then uses the parameters of the shell and its explosion radius and whatnot to calculate how much damage the shell will do. It then uses the tank's armor to reduce damage from that and the total damage is the damage reduced from the armor taken away from the damage from the HE shell. I'm going to show you a couple of examples that I hope will make that a little easier to understand. So, to construct our little example, um, 
I'm going to imagine that you're driving around in a tier 5 Sherman with the 105 mil howitzer. And remember, what we're trying to achieve here is a scenario where you could feasibly get zero damage from a high explosive shell without resorting to something ridiculous like an MS-1 shooting a mouse. So, if we're in a tier 5 Sherman, using the howitzer, the 105 mil howitzer, so firing high explosive is a reasonable, um, reasonable thing to be doing. You pop round a corner and you're faced with a T-29, uh, tier 7 tank, uh. So, as well as having a brown trouser moment, you might just try to pop a shot into the guy without really aiming. And let's say your shot goes just here. So, just on the side of the turret. He's got his turret... Uh, angled a little bit because he saw you turn up and started turning his turret to take you down because you kind of had him in the side a little bit and your shot goes just here just on the front of the turret to the side of the gun mantlet now I've chosen that chosen <laughs> I can do English I've chosen that location quite specifically because I'm fairly sure from that location um, if we try and uh, draw what to draw like a little sphere around the point and whatever to see if there are any other regions um, where the shell would do more damage within that radius, I'm pretty sure we're not going to manage it. Won't do more damage against this because this is spaced armor and it's thick as sin. Uh, the um, actual hull of the tank it won't do damage against because the turret is overhanging the hull, so there'll be no uh, direct ray trace or line of sight from the point of impact to the hull. Similar comments about the top of the, and the side of the turret. So this point here is what we're going to go with. So that's got 203.2 millimeters of armor. So then we can go and we can look up the other uh, parameters of interest and we can try and calculate how much damage our HE shell will do to this spot of turret armor on the T29. So to help us in our quest I've knocked up a quick little spreadsheet just to um, make life a little bit easier rather than having to do all the calculations every single time which would be a massive faff and doing them by hand. So what we've got, um, we're going to be doing a couple of different examples, so target tank, that'll make more sense as we go. We've got nominal shell damage here, impact distance, splash radius and then this column A that's highlighted in green, that's going to calculate the damaging component from our calculation. Armor thickness, spool coefficient, this column B is going to calculate the damage mitigation component and then the total damage will be kicked out in this blue callum, callum? column and actually over on the right hand side I've then got max and min just to do plus or minus 25% of RNG um, on top of that. So we're just going to put in our uh, different numbers. So in this scenario we're firing a 105mm uh, high explosive shell from the howitzer and the high explosive from that gun does an average of 410 damage. So we're going to put 410 there in the nominal shell damage. Impact distance. Well, I chose my location quite carefully such that there wouldn't be another re region within the explosion radius against which the HE shell would do more damage. So our impact distance in this scenario is going to be zero. The damage point and the impact point are the same. There's no distance between them. Splash radius, well I can look this up in the game client or I can look this up on tanks.gg or something like that and I find out that the splash radius of the 105 HE shell is 1.91 meters and you can see straight away that I get a damage component there of 205. Shouldn't come as a great surprise because without any damage reduction from our, our damage point being at a distance from our impact point um, then our damaging component of this equation reduces down to just half of the nominal shell damage. 205 is half of 410. So, my armor thickness at this particular point on the T29, well I can go back to the uh, T29's armor model, and if you remember, the armor thickness at that point on the turret was 203.2, which is quite thick. And then we've got the spooling coefficient, so I don't, I'm assuming this T29 doesn't have a spool liner because spool liners suck. Maybe it does, but I'm assuming it doesn't. For no spool liner, the spool coefficient is just 1. And you can see there that we get a um, damaging component of 205, a damage mitigation component of 223.52, which means the total damage that we would do to this point is actually negative. 
Um, and if you remember what I said, the game takes any negative values and actually just sets them to zero. I could have put an if statement in that box uh, to do that, but I couldn't be bothered. And so our maximum and min here, it doesn't actually matter because plus or minus 25% on zero is going to be zero. So this is a scenario in which we would do no damage without having to resort to something funky like the shell hits the end of the gun and nothing else is in the explosion radius or whatnot. So it's it's entirely possible for two tanks that in the game would meet each other um, for one firing high explosive and not small caliber high explosive either. This is a 105 mil gun for firing a decent HE shell at another tank and doing no damage. So there's an example of that. I thought now we'd go and actually have a look at a real world example from an actual game. Okay, so this is a situation I showed not that long ago because I displayed a game here from Wolfwind in his VKB. So some of you may find this a little bit familiar. And those of you will remember that Wolfwind is shortly going to get slapped with high explosives. So I thought this would be a nice interesting example to test um, our calculations out with because then we'll actually have a damage number to work with. And there we go, 122 damage from the ISM and that is an explosive hit from him. So 122 damage, where did it hit? Well that's nice and easy, slap bang in the middle of the side armour of the VK. So, 122 damage, HE shell into the side armour, let's see if our calculations will reproduce that damage value. So first thing we want to do is look up with the ISM what the damage on the high explosive shells, what the splash radius on the high explosive shells are. Now the ISM is quite a nice tank to work with because it only gets an option of two guns. They're both the same calibre, and in terms of high explosive performance, they're both identical. So, we can't really get this wrong. I'm just going to switch to HE here, and we can see the high explosive shells do 530 average damage with a 2.49 metre splash radius. So, now we just need to go and have a look and see what the armour of the VK is. So again, this is a nice easy example. The hit was bang on the side armour, and the side armour of the VK is a nice uniform 120mm thick. Now if the shot went down here, there is a thinner plate under the hull here that would make things more difficult, but as it is, we're not worried about that. Now because the shot hit on the side here, I'm fairly confident there's no other region uh, that would come within the splash radius with uh, against which the shell would do more damage. So we're going to use this armour value of 120mm to perform our calculation. OK, so once again we can start filling in the numbers and seeing what number we get out at the end. So nominal shell damage, uh, if you remember when we looked it up for the ISM's HE shells, was 530, which I believe is pretty common for 122mm guns. Um, the impact distance, much as in the previous example, is going to be zero because the impact point and the damaging point are going to be the same. Now the splash radius, this doesn't actually matter because our impact distance is zero, so this is going to be set to zero anyway, but just for the sake of completeness, our splash radius is 2.49. So we get a damaging component of 265. Now the armour thickness at that point was 120 millimetres. Spool coefficient, now I asked Wolfwin and he does not run a spool liner on the VK, so that's just going to be one. And we end up with a damaging component of 265, a damage mitigation component of 132, and so the total damage is 133, at which point everybody throws their arms up and goes, wait a minute, Chip, that's not the amount of damage that Wolfwin received. No, you're right. It's not. It's close, but it's not quite there, and there's a very simple reason for that. That's because we haven't factored in RNG, of course. Every damage roll is subject to plus or minus 25% RNG, and that's what I've got over here in this little box. So if you've got a 133 damage, the max roll is 166, and the min roll is 100. So all we can say is that we would expect damage between 100 and 166 and the damage that Wolfram received was between 100 and 166. So the in-game results are consistent with the calculation that we've just performed. Hurrah! So as we go through this, I've actually made a second little table here and the idea here is to have a quick look at the effect of having a spool liner on the tank. So. Um, in the case of the T29, don't pay too much attention to this number because, of course, the damage total was actually set to zero, so the spool liner effect would be zero. But in the case of the VK, 
you can see that our total damage would go from 133 down to 67 and this is assuming a spool liner that is not in the survivability slot. We could bump that coefficient up to 1.6 and that would give you an impression of what it was like in the survivability slot which actually I think we are going to do because this is a heavy tank at the end of the day. So in this case the spool liner reduces the damage by about 80, 79, which isn't too bad if we're actually going to be honest. This is going on the just the average uh, damage roll, by the way. Um, in this particular instance, it would actually have been less because um, the RNG roll was slightly low. So that's not actually too bad in this particular example. However, do bear in mind I've specifically picked an example here where the impact point and the damaging point of the HE shell are the same. In many instances, this would not be the case. So bear that in mind when we have a look at the spool liner effect and bear in mind what else you could be using in that uh, equipment slot essentially. Um, what you'll notice is the spool liner has more of an effect against uh, HE shells fired from tanks which is relatively rare and much less of an effect against artillery because the huge splash radius tends to mean they can usually find a much weaker point of armour to perform the damage calculation against. So, just with that brief mention of the effect of the spool liner, we're going to have a look at the effect of spaced armour now. So, we're now having a look at the effect that spaced armour has on a high explosive shell. Now, this is potentially going to get a little bit confusing. I've chosen in this instance to leave the wording up so that you can read it um, for yourself. Um, and I'm going to try and describe it to you, but if you think I've made a mistake, by all means, mention it in the comments. So, the effect of spaced armour is usually kind of just described in this sort of wishy-washy way. And, and what we're trying to do here is make the effect much more specific, um, or describe the effect in a much more uh, detailed and specific manner. So, when a HE round hits spaced armour, one, spaced armour penetration is calculated. So you try and work out if your HE round has penetrated the spaced armour in question. Bearing in mind most actual spaced armour plates on tanks are relatively thin. So those side skirts on the Panzer IV for example are around 5mm thick off the top of my head. And uh, But the most common sort of spaced armour we're looking at are the tracks which often provide something in the region of an extra 10mm of spaced armour. If spaced armour is penetrated a damage sector around a penetration zone is constructed with a centre at a point of penetration. So again, we're looking at a 45 degree, we'll come on to this in a second, a 45 degree damage sector being constructed or, or cone being constructed within the tank from the point of penetration. If a damage sector, uh, sorry, inside a damage sector, a point is sought through which vehicle damage is maximal, is maximised. So this is very similar um, to what we had earlier on. Now, with, with one important exception, if you penetrate spaced armour, you haven't actually penetrated the hull of the tank. So what we essentially have here is a high explosive round penetrates the spaced armour, but explodes as it penetrates the spaced armour. It has not yet penetrated the hull of the tank. So you then project a cone forward from the point of impact, the explosion point, and then the game looks for the point against the tank's armour within that region where maximal damage can be achieved. This is kind of similar to high explosive rounds that don't penetrate the armour on a tank. And then the rest proceeds as normal. If spaced armour is not penetrated, near the point of contact the weakest point is sought through which a trace ray has not met any obstacles. A 45 degree damage cone is constructed from this point into a vehicle. So if you have not penetrated the armour, the game attempts to construct another region uh, in order to work out and, and find the, the point of the armour of the tank against which the HE round will do the most damage. However, again, from the point of explosion, the damage point must be able to draw an unobstructed line of sight uh, back to the point of the explosion, the point of impact. What that means in practice is if you have a large sheet of spaced armour and a HE round hits that but does not penetrate it, uh, and the HE uh, there, and there is no um, line of sight from the point of impact on the spaced armour to the actual hull of the tank, the HE shell can do no damage. Now that's a pretty rare circumstance 
Usually extra plates of spaced armour are so thin a HE round will go through them. Um, or they're tracks, in which case usually you can find a bit of the hull to do damage against, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. From this point, a new 45 degree damage cone is constructed. If any internal tank modules, including tank crew, happen to be inside this cone, they will receive a critical damage from this point into a vehicle. So the key point here to bear in mind is that with spaced armour, the shell explodes away from the hull of the tank. Even if the shell penetrates the spaced armour itself, it's spaced armour, there's a space between this sheet of armour and the hull of the tank, the shell will detonate away from the surface of the hull of the tank which means the amount of damage you receive is going to be quite significantly reduced. We're going to have a look at an example of this in a moment and you'll see what the size of this effect is. This is also why if you tend to shoot with HE into vehicles tracks, let's say the shell hits um, part of the suspension, it explodes but this is spaced armour and therefore the explosion is actually away from the physical hull of the tank itself and so you do reduce damage and this tends to mean that firing HE rounds into the tracks of vehicles yeah it can blow their tracks off which is great but if you're just looking at doing raw damage you often don't actually do that much damage so I'm going to show you an example of this in in action and then once again we're going to attempt to Cal perform a calculation on this and see if we can reproduce the amount of damage in question. So for this demonstration we're going to join me. Now I'm in the British tier 5 medium tank, the Sherman 3. I am equipped with the 105mm howitzer. Now in a moment a Panzer 4H is going to pop around the side of the rock formation here um, presume, I assume, to engage the VK. Two things are going to happen, one of which is not relevant to this particular uh, video, but I'm going to complain about it anyway, and the other is relevant to this. Thing number one, he's going to shoot an AP round out of the 105mm howitzer, that guy is using the derp gun, but he fires an AP round, not heat, so it's only got 50 odd penetration, and he's going to penetrate my frontal armour, which is a little bit annoying, um, he gets a little bit lucky there. And two, I'm going to find fire a HE round at him in return, but I'm not going to aim it very well. So we're just going to see that in action. So, in just a moment, this Panzer IV is going to rock up. I get spotted here. I'm just going to speed this along a little bit until the Panzer IV uh, does indeed uh, turn up. Right, here we go. So, Panzer IV. So he comes around the corner. He puts an AP round into me, and I'm just going to slow this down. And I put a poorly aimed HE round into him. Now, <laughs> I'm going to show you roughly where that round has gone into him in a moment. But just bear in mind, we do 75 damage to him. 75. Remember that. We're going to come back to it. Okay, so... That HE round ends up going in to the side of the tank about here. So, upper hull. Through the spaced armour. Now, this is a really bad shot from me because of the spaced armour, essentially. I could have shot him here and had a good chance to just penetrate and kill him. I could have shot him here, good chance to penetrate and kill him. But, poorly aimed shot, should have aimed it better. It goes here. Um, even if I'd taken the shots against some other part of his armour and it hadn't actually killed him, at least it could have splashed onto somewhere maybe with thinner armour. But as it is, that's not what happens. So, um, the shell goes roughly here. And this is where we're going to need to get a little bit inventive with how we work stuff out, frankly. So, what's going to happen? The shell's going to reach the spaced armour. This is a 5mm spaced armour plate. The penetration on my HE shell is 50-something. So the shell is going to penetrate this spaced armour plate, but the shell is then going to explode on the inside of that spaced armour plate. It's never actually going to reach the hull. So the hull is then going to be within the explosion radius. Right, so to perform this calculation, this is actually not trivial, and we have to make a number of assumptions, and I've already done a little bit of maths behind the background to get a couple of these numbers, and it's possible we're going to get the answer wrong, so let's see how this goes. Um, nominal shell damage. It's the same HE shell as with the T29 example, so 410, that's nice and easy. Impact distance, this is where everything starts going wrong. I'm going to put the splash radius in first because that's nice and easy, it's the same as before. Impact distance, now, the shell hits the spaced armour, 
and explodes and you get a, a conical section or a, a sector around the point of the explosion that has a 45 degree um, angular size, solid angle. Uh, 45 degree solid angle isn't a thing. doesn't matter. You get my point, hopefully. It's a 45 degree wide cone. Now, <laughs> judging from the replay, I kind of tried to estimate roughly what sort of angle you're looking at. Um, the shell um, traveling through between the space armor and the side of the hull. Throw in the fact that you've got this uh, 45 degree sector, so that's 22 and a half degrees either side of the central line. Do a little bit of trigonometry to work out what the impact distance probably is. And throw in the fact that if you do a little bit of Google Foo, you can find out that the typical sort of spacing between the spaced armour and the hull um, on a Panzer IV H is around 400 millimetres, which is 40 centimetres, which is 0.4 metres. And that seems roughly consistent with the sort of spacing they've gone from in the game with some very crude measurements. So, you throw all that together and you end up with an impact distance of about 0.52 meters. I don't think it can really be any more than that. But you, hopefully you get an idea of how much of a pain in the neck it is to work out that parameter. So this might go hideously wrong. That gives us a damage characteristic of 149 before we look at armor mitigation. Now the thickness of the armor, the side armor on that panzer is 30 millimeters. And now we have the issue of whether or not he has a spool liner. So if he doesn't have a spool liner, and I don't know, because this is shooting at a bloke. So if he doesn't have a spool liner, the spool coefficient is 1. The damage mitigation is 33. Our total damage is 116. Throw in RNG and we get a minimum damage roll of 87, which is still too high. So... If he does have a spool liner, and a lot of people, a lot more people will use a spool liner than, than I expect. So it's possible if he does use a spool liner, then the average damage he did, or I did to him, goes up to around 100. And the minimum damage roll comes down to, well, basically 75, which is what we got. So it looks like, actually, that Panzer IV was using a spool liner... And I got a minimum damage roll, which is a little bit unlucky. Go figure. Um, which is weird. So just out of curiosity, what I'm going to do... So that's 75. We've managed to recreate the 75 damage I actually got, even if we have to come to the conclusion that I was quite unlucky. Just for these purposes, I'm going to put that in as 1. Um, because we're then going to look at what impact the spool liner actually has down here. So, nominal shell damage, 410. Impact distance, 0.52. Uh, splash radius, 1.91. Booby doo doo doo. Armor thickness is 30. Spool coefficient, we're going to put in as 1.5 now. Not in a heavy tank, so we can't get the buffed um, effect of the spool liner there. And right, so we. <laughs> the, the spool liner there saved him 16 and a half damage. 17 damage. Hurrah for him. Would another piece of equipment have been better for him? Probably. But, I'm just going to, just to avoid confusion, I'm now just going to set this back to 1.5. Uh, the spool coefficient up here. So, minimum damage roll was about 75. So, we have managed to just about reproduce that damage value. Just. But it's a pain in the neck. And like I said, I did some trig behind the scenes. Some trigonometry to make that work and to well not to make that work per se but to, to get the numbers needed for that so it looks like he was using a spool liner and I got unlucky well that just sucks doesn't it <laughs> anyway that's the effects of spaced armor with a HE shell now there's just one last thing I want to mention um, and then we'll wrap this video up so the last thing I briefly wanted to mention was self-propelled guns. I have studiously avoided mentioning them throughout most of this video, and that might seem odd because they're the most obvious HE lobbers in the game. However, a little while ago, Wargaming decided... So, for anyone who doesn't know, SPGs used to do loads of damage per shot, 
then Wargaming changed them so they did less, but they made the splash radius more. And then Wargaming changed how the damage was calculated for increasing distance from the point of impact for a HE shell fired by an SPG. So, as far as I understand it, unless they've changed it back, this expression here, where you've got the impact distance divided by the splash radius, does not apply to SPGs. Before anyone starts going, oh, Wargaming love SPGs, they actually nerfed SPGs by making that damage um, fall off faster with distance from the impact point. So, the general comments I've made here about SPGs you could apply, but the specific calculations would not unless Wargaming have changed it again without me knowing, and if that's the case, someone feel free to throw some comments into the some comments into the comments. Well, what else are you going to put in them? Anyway, throw a comment to that effect in. Um, but the actual calculations won't work exactly for SPGs. So, after all that, what was actually the point of me trying to waffle on to you about high explosive shell mechanics for that long? Well, the point is... As I kind of alluded to at the beginning, there's a couple here. One, yeah, you can argue with people on the internet, woo. Two, um, because a lot of people don't seem to understand how this works, including a lot of community contributors. So I have attempted to describe, to the best of my understanding, and to the best of the description in the World of Tanks wiki, how high explosive damage works works. Now, obviously in a game you're not going to go around and do some calculations in your head to work out exactly how much damage you might do, plus or minus 25% RNG, etc. But, hopefully you can use this to try and make the most of your shot. So, if you're firing HE at someone you're going to get the best bang for your buck if you do the following. Try not to shoot at spaced armour. Um, because that's a bit of a pain, frankly. Try not to shoot at the front of a tank's turret if the turret is turned to the side because often you'll find the turret overhangs the hull and if you hit them slap bang in the front of the turret where they've got a gun mantlet, it's nice thick armour, there's a very good chance you're going to do very little damage or zero damage. Try to hit them where they have weak armour, so things like engine decks, roof of the turret, a HE shell underneath the tank that will explode up into the... Um, floor armour of the tank is good. HE shells into the side of a tank, especially essentially if it goes toward the suspension, won't do very much damage, but it may well track them, which is nice. By all means, play around with high explosive yourself and see what you can do. But, but um, these are the sort of things I was trying to convey um, with this video, and hopefully... Um, people may have learned something from this. This one was actually a bit of a nuisance to put together and took a little while. So, by all means, let us know what you think. Was it worth the effort? Was it not? Eh, it's done now, regardless of whether you think it was worth the effort or not. But, either way, I hope I explained myself well enough. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Maybe, maybe not. hope you found it vaguely informative. Um, if you did, I've got some other guides and whatnot that may also be of help to you. And... Feel free to subscribe and do all those other things if you want to. And as ever, I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.